there's a chance that you may not want to see what I have to show you. So, fly, you fools! Hello friends, it's your man Z here from Our Reviews Will Kill You, and we're going to talk a little bit about Lord of the Rings, and I know we did a reaction trailer, or we did a reaction to the trailer, and a reaction to the title card. I would consider myself a pretty big Lord of the Rings fan. Um, just to give you a little bit about me, is that I've read the books, the Lord of the Rings and The Hobbit, probably 10 times each. I, I don't claim to be the biggest fan in the world. I've read The Silmarillion. I've read all the appendices. Uh, I haven't read all the unfinished works. Big fan of the Peter Jackson Lord of the Rings trilogy. Not a fan of the Hobbit movies because they were clearly a disaster. You take a 250-page book and stretch it out into three three-hour movies and you get tri tramp, trash, take out the trash. So you get a bunch of garbage there. And um, yeah, I'm a little not clear as to what's going on here. Because uh, there's been some interesting, one of our, our fans told us to check out some of the, the Amazon shill reactions. Like these are people who were paid by Amazon to give a reaction to this. And I felt it was worth talking to. So I watched 12 minutes and 28 seconds of absolute horrible garbage to bring you this. So we'll run through a little bit of it and then we'll kind of mush it all together and give our conclusion here. Uh, again, if you like what I do here, please like and subscribe. We have a full-length audio podcast that you can also download for free, which I will discuss a little bit later. So let's let's go on with this. This is uh, The article itself was from Bounding Into Comics, but the teaser trailer, they had it embedded here, so I figured I would just play a little bit of it, and I'm going to skip around a little bit just to give you some very brief tastes and do some breakdowns as to why this seems like it's going to fail. Every time I was like, okay, take a breath, something new would happen, and it was <gasps> It's Middle Earth, there's never peace, right? If, like, Sauron is hot, I feel like people would be like, I can fix him. <laughs> Middle Earth had, like, a club. <laughs> Yo, this tune is banging! Awestruck, mystified, and starstruck. Yeah, none of those things. <laughs> I felt none of those things watching the trailer. I felt zero of whatever they're talking about. They are insane people talking about Lord of the Rings. I have no idea when, when none of their jokes are funny. Nothing they say is funny. Um, and they claim like they're the fellowship of the, of, of the influencers of Middle Earth or some nonsense. The fellowship of the influencers. What are you talking about? But just here, this is, this is the next part of what they had to say. We're introduced to the first black elf. Mm -hmm. We're introduced to the first uh, female dwarf. Now, diversity, especially on screen as an actor, means a lot to me because growing up, I hardly had that, you know, watching TV and watching a lot of films and stuff. Never saw people of my color. So it's exciting to see that, you know, diversity is being explored. And look, diversity is fine. But you know what I want representation of? People with enormous junk. It's representation that I haven't fairly seen in mainstream television. There's just not enough of us around. If you have an enormous wang and you want to show... I need more representation of that because I'm just not getting it in my modern shows. Perhaps one day I will get the representation I'm looking for. But for now, I'll just have to make do with uh, watching things from the 70s, I guess. Because I'm just not getting it. I need more representation. Why am I not getting it? <laughs> so that's what's important to these guys. Not the lore, not the re not the the nothing, N none of the historicalness. Let's let's check out another short segment here. Um, an elf or a hobbit <laughs> and join in with it, even though I wasn't represented, like even like my disability mm. or my queerness wasn't represented. It just makes me so happy. It makes my heart warm. Like gonna be seeing younger people. Literally, like, the rings. We <laughs> what? Do they know something we don't know about the disabilities and the queerness that's going to be included in the Lord of the Rings? I am unclear on it. Uh, I'm pretty sure that queer meant something completely different back when Tolkien wrote these things. So I'm a little confused. Again, I'm just looking for my own representation, and I still haven't seen it. So I'm a little disappointed. Got one more clip that just proves my overall point here that uh, 
these people are not, in fact, they may like the movies, but that's about as far as it goes. So let's just get this pearl of wisdom. That we're going to be seeing things that are potentially going to make us love the Hobbit films and the Lord of the Rings films and potentially the books as well. It's the last night we had our own. Let me play that for you one more time because it's very clear what her agenda is. So the fact that we're going to be seeing things that are potentially going to make us love the Hobbit films and the Lord of the Rings films and potentially the books as well. It's the last night. <laughs> Did you see the look at her face where she shrugs off? She's like, the books? What are these book things with papers? Two covers with papers in between? My lord, what are those? I've never heard of such things before. The books? Did they make you imagine things in your brain? Oh wait, Tolkien described them in great detail so that you could see everything in your mind's eye. What are we doing? Well, people, please, you're killing me here. Why? You, all they care about is the diversity and representation that was added in after the fact. These are all make-believe creatures. I've never met an elf, as far as I know, and I've never met any trolls or goblins or um, tree folk. Tree folk representation? Nonsense. So what's really bizarre about this is they talk a lot about this being a prequel set in the Second Age, right? Okay, fair enough. Except we have this ar article. Thank you, Bounding Into Comics, again. The Lord, the Lord of the Rings, the Rings of Power showrunners admit they don't have the rights to the Silmarillion or the Unfinished Tales. Huh? Miso confusion. So the showrunners, J.D. Payne and Patrick McKay, admit that their shows don't have rights to depict the Second Age. So why are you doing a show about the Second Age? They only have the rights to the Fellowship of the Ring, the Two Towers, the Return of the King, the Appendices, and The Hobbit. That's essentially two books. So what are you doing? They don't have the rights to the Silmarillion, Unfinished Tales, The History of Middle-Earth, or any of those other books but you're still doing the second age. Why would you even bother? They say, and their, their claim is, so you say, why would you bother doing this if you don't have the rights to the material? Well, McKay has an answer. He says, there's a version of everything we need for second age in the books we have the rights to. As long as we're painting in those lines and not egregiously, so they're making things 25% different and just enough so that they can write their own garbage. If you wanted to do that, just do your own thing. You, There's no patent, as far as I know, on elves and goblins and dwarves and things like that. You can do whatever you want. You don't have to do it within the confines of the Lord of the Rings. I mean, most people, including myself, don't even consider the Hobbit movies to be canon because they stretched out so much junk and really didn't... It's like Peter Jackson was like, I don't know what to do with these movies, and they're making me do three of them. It might have been one really good movie. There's probably a fan cut somewhere that turned it into something interesting. But are, it, it's just ridiculous. So what are they trying to accomplish here? They clearly have their own agenda. They clearly just wanted to have, like, if you have these paid shills coming on talking about the representation, the representation, the representation, then you don't care about the Lord. You just care about the representation. Just expect fans not to like it. It doesn't look good to me. I'm sure I'll watch some of it and review it for you guys. Let me know what you think. Do you think we're missing the boat here? Is there something I'm missing? I don't understand. It sounds like as someone who's read the books, I am very confused as to what they're doing. It would be like trying to write, I don't know, The Wizard of Oz, but instead of doing The Wizard of Oz, you decide to make it out of something that's like the prequel to The Wizard of Oz that you're not allowed to write about. And, you know, the three witches, maybe there were five witches and they subtracted two or added three. And then, but the witches were all different witches. Like, I don't know. It just doesn't make any sense to me. So let me know in the comments below what you think. Are, do you have high hopes for this? Does it shock you to know that they have, don't have the rights to what they're writing about? Not so shocking to me. 
Anyway, uh, like and subscribe. We greatly appreciate it. Uh, definitely helps grow this channel. We're working on it. And uh, be sure to subscribe to our full-length audio podcast. It's free on iTunes, Stitcher, Spotify, all those fun places. And as for me, I am on to the next one. Oh, <laughs>